Please consider becoming a patron of Myth Vision Podcast. You'll get early access to every video, including this amazing one. And you can ask me personal questions, private message me, anything you'd like. Professor John J. Collins, God doesn't appear to be the unmoved mover with absolute sovereign knowledge of everything in the Old Testament. This seems to be a big problem with systematic theologians who want to put God in a particular box. Can you tell us about God? And I know that's so general, right? Like, let me just throw God in there. I will not attempt to talk about about systematic theologians. Right. I'm sure they differ among themselves as much as anybody else. (laughs) Well, it appears that God knows. Well, no, God, God in the Hebrew Bible. Right. One of the first things you read, if you're reading along in Genesis, is that God doesn't seem to know everything that's going on. In the story of Adam and Eve, he has to call out to Adam, where are you hiding? Uh, a couple of chapters later, when he sees the spread of evil on earth, he regrets that he made humanity. As far as I know, that may be the only case where God actually admits to having made a mistake. But then, you know, rolling forward from there, as I mentioned already, uh, the, the chaos monster is never fully dead. It can raise its head at any time. You know, evil chaos keeps coming back. It's a struggle to maintain order in the world. That's the, the kind of God you're dealing with. And then it's a process because also in most of the Hebrew Bible, God is very big on the idea of human free will. In other words, you've got a choice. Now, if you were really uh, had a God who was fully in control of things, you wouldn't be leaving people to have a choice. Because if you let people have a choice, you're not going to be in control of things. Things are going to happen that you don't want. So that's more of the kind of model that you've got. This is not a a perfect God who created a perfect universe. This is a good God who is trying to make something good out of recalcitrant material that Hmm. is constantly kind of pulling away from him and going in other directions. And then what you get in the later chapters, like the later books, like the apocalyptic literature, is the hope. But eventually, he'll put his foot down and settle all of this. When do you think in history, God becomes like the immovable mover idea? Like he is omni, omniscient, omnipotent. Like, is, this, is there any time within the Hebrew Bible that... Not, not within the Hebrew Bible. Uh, that, it seems to me, you know, comes from theology as we know the subject, is the attempt to combine the Hebrew Bible with Greek philosophy. Philo of Alexandria was already doing that. Now, to some degree, Philo will will give you a perfect God. Philo is not going to admit that God changed his mind on things. Uh, But he's being influenced by Plato and Aristotle. Mm. So that's where the impetus comes from. The church fathers continue that very much in the tradition of Philo and then down to the Middle Ages. I think that's where all of that develops. But you don't get that without significant philosophical input. Wow. And there's nothing that you could really call philosophy in the Hebrew Bible. I love this. This is so much fun. So God appears yes. in different yeah. sources differently. And w- yeah. like, especially when you look at the documentary hypothesis, nodding to Joel Baden, of course, uh, definitely got to check out his work. Yes. This, he is visible. He seems to be like a man. He's walking with Adam. Yeah. He's a human. It looks like almost yeah. like a, well, obviously a higher, like a, like bigger. a bigger of a human. Uh, and then in other places, you can't see him. He's in the sky. He, he, can you tell us about that? Uh, I think pretty much all of the Hebrew Bible, and I think this would also go for the New Testament, assumes that God 
has a body. Now, the stuff of which that body is made mustn't be f flesh and blood. And so it can be invisible. It can be maybe porous, I don't know. Uh, it's the kind of body that they expect the righteous would have after death, which is a luminous body, garments of light. That's a pun on something in Genesis when they put on garments of skin. The word for skin is or, and the word for light is or, spelled with a different letter, but it sounds much the same. And, you know, in the, even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they think the righteous dead will have garments of light. Uh, Dale Martin, who used to teach here, has a very good book on resurrection, in which he points out that for most people in the ancient world, and including most Greeks, there is no such thing as pure spirit. You always have some kind of stuff. So it's a question of what kind of body. And this would apply to God as well, I think. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. And this, I mean, we could see that even in the New Testament with Paul. A yeah. new body. A new, goes in perishable, comes out imperishable, but it's a new body. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the bodies of God, uh, Benjamin Summer teaches at Jewish Theological Seminary. Has a good book. Thank you so much. And he has yeah. good, he has interesting stuff, you know, from a very Jewish perspective on revelation, on the kind of revelation that you get. Because, um, you know, a, a, one of his arguments is that what Moses brings down to the people aren't the words of God, it's the words of Moses. In other words, whatever Moses heard, he is the one who translates it. That's a useful idea. That is. I guess the <coughs> next question in light of God is yeah. gods. So, <laughs> in the pantheon. Yeah. So, I think it's important to talk about that for a second. God was a king, you say this over yeah. and over, uh, a bigger king than a human king would be, with other uh, lower rulers with him, if you will, yeah. gods, they're yeah. Elohim. Yeah. Later on tradition, like, turns them into angels to try and kind of, like, I think, to kind of say, okay, yeah. they're not gods, let's not like let other gods be with God. Can you tell us what their role is in this? And is Satan one of those? Originally, yes. But I think in most of, certainly the ancient Near East, but this would also be true of Homeric Greece, for example, you have, uh, you think of the world of the gods like a court, like a king's court. So, you know, you have various characters in it who don't always get along. Some of them are ambitious. Some of them may be a little rebellious on occasion. Um, very, very typical. <laughs> it's so it, human-like. No, it's very human-like. Even in what we call Second Isaiah, now, in Genesis chapter 1, you have a creation where God says, and it is. But then, at the end of it, God says, let us make. And many people would say that the us means he's speaking to his counsel. The assumption, again, is he's not there on his own. Uh, in what we call second Isaiah, Isaiah 40 to 55, written around the time of the the end of the Babylonian exile, uh, the prophet repeatedly says, look, the gods of the nations are no gods. They're not real gods. But it doesn't actually deny that they exist. The claim is that they don't have the same kind of power that our god does. But I don't think they ever come to the point of denying that those gods exist. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, heaven is full of Elohim, which is the, the Hebrew word for God, but very often you'll see it translated as uh, as angels. You know, something to just tone it down a little bit. <laughs> this is great. I love this because I'd like to ask about the other gods. So we yeah. have, the, we're looking at the Bible, meaning putting on the lens from the perspective of an Israelite and their their view of God because that's what we're reading. It's their worldview. Yeah. And their God is chief. And now you have this, this court with other gods. Are those other gods in the court from the, the mind of the authors 
Um, the nations, the other nations' gods? Sometimes, yes, because you have this in, in Deuteronomy, that uh, when the Most High you know, divided up uh, the nations, when El divided up the nations, he assigned gods to each of the people, but he kept uh, Israel for himself. Isn't it? That's, I, I yeah. heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, I heard that the idea that, for example, Israel is Yahweh's inheritance. Mm -hmm. And this kind of makes you think, inheritance? Who gave him this inheritance? inheritance. El. And is that his no. father? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Now, you know, if you're interested in the early religion, kind of the pre-Israelite religion of Israel, there are a couple of people you should talk to. Ted Lewis has a huge book on this. Teaches at, at Hopkins. And he's very good, I think, on Ale and Baal. Because I think it is beyond reasonable dispute that at one time, you know, Ale and Baal were simply different gods. In the Hebrew Bible, they tend to be combined. They both tend to be identified with Yahweh. But that wasn't the original plan. The other person you should talk to is Mark Smith. Do you know of Mark? I have heard his name, but I have not. Yeah. Now at Princeton Seminary. Okay. I'm definitely yeah, going to. Yeah. So I, the reason I asked yeah. is because <clears throat> in this, I've been dealing with this particular topic that interests me. And I know this is, you know how you have a topic and everyone looks at you like, I'm not interested in that kind of topic. But yeah. to me, how the how the nations are perceived and what their expectation, what the Israelite who's writing this book most likely, yeah. how do they perceive the nations and what was their what was the outcome? Like, did they have an expectation that was either positive or negative? And I'm interested in knowing, like, did they have an idea that kind of walks into what we see in Christianity, right? So, um, what I mean by that is, is you have ethne, non-Israelites, now joining into this club of saying, we want to follow the God of Israel. We, we believe in this. Now, I mean, that's an interesting question. The question, if, if I'm getting you right, is at what point do you really get monotheism? Right. And I think think you begin to get it in Hellenistic Judaism, I would say you only get it when you come into contact with Greek philosophy. In books like the Sibylline Oracles, you get the formula, Heis Theos. Now, you know, in Deuteronomy, you have Yahweh is God, Yahweh Echad. Echad is one or alone. Does it mean Yahweh is one, or does it mean Yahweh alone is God? And this is ambiguous. Uh, by the time you get into the Greek writings, you'd get increasing, because you would get some pagan philosophers also saying this, that there is really only one supreme God. And then that gets picked up in, in early Christianity. For the most part, in Judaism, uh, you do not have the idea that everybody needs to worship the same God. Right. It is appropriate for Gentiles to worship the Gentile gods, and, you know, that's too bad for them. Are there but, any depictions or future prophetic claims that maybe one day, the, because I've read somewhere where the nation's gods that might play into that court scene as, you know, yeah. subordinates to the supreme god of Israel, um, that their gods led their, the nations astray. They led them into bad things. And, yeah. and that they would one day get the, the I guess you'd say, uh, be responsible by the chief supreme god from the perspective of the Israelite. And that the nations themselves also would, would kind of come and realize, all right, let me come to the right God. This, this Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that you have a strand of that. Again, not everybody thought that way, but that there, that's a definite strand in Judaism. Do you have any text you, you can think of off the top of your head that might do that? Or? Well, I think, uh, you know, again, I would look to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2. You know, in those days, the mountain of the Lord will be lifted above all the mountains and all the nations will say, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Go streaming to Mount Zion. And the mountain of the Lord's probably it, like the it, temple court type yes, of? Yes, yeah. 
Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah.